Hello and welcome or welcome back to Book More Chronicles. Today I am doing a review of Kingdom of Copper by S.A. Chakraborty. This is the second book in the David Bod trilogy. So if you're unfamiliar with City of Brass, book one in this trilogy, we are following Nari, who is a con artist in 18th century Cairo. Nari is pretending to be a fortune teller in order to get money. She's kind of living on the streets. However, even though she is conning people, she does have a specific ability that is a little interesting. She is able to sense sickness in people and she doesn't really know why because she doesn't have any family. So so she knows nothing about her past. One day while performing a ritual to help a little girl, she accidentally summons an ancient jinn warrior. He realizes that there is something special about her too, so he whisks her off to the magical city of Devabad. While in Devabad, Nari starts to learn a little bit more about her past. However, the city is also on the brink of a civil war, so there's tons of political intrigue. It's very interesting. It is dual perspective, so we get Nari's point of view as well as Alizade Al-Qahtani, who is the second son of the current king. So it's an interesting dynamic because we get to see a little bit of Nari's journey as well as the inner workings of the palace. I absolutely love City of Brass. It was a five star read for me. This one ended up being four stars. I was really enjoying it especially in the beginning. Um, things started to get really intense and then went completely left. The ending is confusing. I don't understand how it happened. I don't know where the story is going and I don't know how it's going to be fixed. Honestly, I have no predictions for Empire of Gold. But I will say that if you are reading this series and you're getting ready to head into book two, there is a five year time jump. And I don't think that's a spoiler. However, it was very unexpected and a little jarring. I would have thought it'd be maybe one year in between the books at the most. So five was definitely not at all what I was expecting. That's all that I can say for now without spoiling it. So if you have not yet read Kingdom of Copper or Light 2, this is your official spoiler warning. All right, so as usual, we'll start with the characters. I still like Nari. I don't like the situation that she's in. Of course, it's not ideal. She's unhappy and she feels like she's being held captive, which I totally understand. But I did still like her as a character and that did not change at all. One thing that did change is that I actually kind of like Muntadir now. He's kind of a dick and he can be a little irresponsible at times, but I don't dislike him. So that was shocking. There was something that happens with him and I I, um, I was a little sad, I'm not gonna lie. But I'll talk about that later. I like Zainab more than I did in the first book because I no longer think she was a bitch. I actually think that her and Nari's friendship was really nice to see. So I'm glad that we got more of that. <sighs> I didn't care for Ali in the first book. I thought his perspective was really boring. I felt like we learned a lot of really great information from his point of view, but it wasn't necessarily about him. It was just about things that were happening around him. And in this one, I kind of just feel indifferent towards him. Like, I don't care. I still don't care. He's just kind of there, in my opinion. As far as his companions, I don't really have opinions on them either. I think Akis is pretty cool. I think that's her name. Um, and I know his best friend died, but to be totally honest, I can't remember that guy's name, so there's that. I also feel a little indifferent towards Zarya Abafush. I, I don't know. I just, like, don't care. And getting his perspective and, like, him talking about how much he misses Nari and how he loves her, like, I didn't buy their romance the first time, and so now I really don't care. I don't know. I mean, I know it's not the typical 100-year-old man and teenager, but 1,000-year-old man and 20-year-old isn't really much better. So, I don't know. I just don't care. I felt like their romance in book one was really unnecessary. And in this one, what irritated me the most was how Ali's supposed attraction to Nari was constantly brought up. It's like she wanted to take it to the verge of a love triangle, but didn't quite take it there. And then I'm like, okay, well, Nari doesn't have feelings for him. So so what the fuck is the point? Also, she's married to his brother, so that's kind of weird. Like, can we just do without all this mess? I did like Nisreen for the most part. She didn't have to die, for real. I don't think that was necessary. She was a side character that I really appreciated, even though she was keeping a lot from Nari. I think that having that support of someone she just really needed. So Nisreen dying was not ideal. Jamshid. I knew that there was something up from the last chapter of City of Brass because Kave comes and like cuts off some t tattoo or whatever the fuck he has on the back of his neck that nobody knows about 
and it healed itself and I was like oh shit I think he might be a Nahid and I was like mm, I don't know and so something happens in this book I don't remember I think it was just the fact that it was mentioned that Kave and Maniza were sleeping together and I was literally just like checking my phone constantly waiting for Dasha because Dasha and I buddy read this and I was waiting for her to get to a certain chapter so that I could talk to her about it and I went like full conspiracy theory on her I was like okay look at the end of the first book this happened and I think that he's a Nahid I think that might be Nari's brother but then again maybe not because how did Maniza hide two pregnancies but I was right. I fucking called that shit. I still have questions about how Maniza was able to hide two pregnancies, but still. For a second, I was like, hold up, this Kave can't be Nari's father. That doesn't make any sense. And he's not because she's Shafi, which is interesting because we don't know who her father actually is. Also because Kave kind of acts like he hates Nari, so that would have been really weird. But I'm just glad I was able to predict that. Well, I mean, it's slightly obvious, but whatever. So. When I finished City of Brass, I had questions for Kingdom of Copper. My first question was, is Nari's mother alive? We find out that she is. I also wanted to know why she abandoned her child. Turns out that is not the case. She said that the Mara took Nari from her when she was a child. We didn't get any further details, but I want to know more about that. I was wondering how Ali was doing. Turns out he's doing great in Amgazira. But I had to return to Devabad. Hmm, kind of feel like I could have done without that, but that's just me. And then my last question was, is Jamshid a Nahid? And he is. So I'm interested to see how that goes. And it's interesting because Ghassan knew. Oh, you know what? Muntadir has been fucking both Nahid siblings. And I don't know how I feel about that. And I thought that Moon Tadir was gonna die and I had accepted it. And I realized that I cared about him as a character. And then all of a sudden he fucking survived a Zulfikar attack. And I don't know how that's possible. We'll talk about all the magic and what the fuck happened there in a minute. However, when Moon Tadir finds out that Jamshid and Nari are siblings, <sighs> yeah. That's gonna be interesting. So the reason that I didn't give this a full five stars is because I was really enjoying it. Shit hit the fan, it got intense. There was a coup and then an invasion. I was loving it, right? But then somehow, Nari and Ali end up in Egypt again. Well, Nari ends up in Egypt again. Ali's never been there. And I'm confused because Cairo's over here Devabad is in Devastana, which is over here, and Amgazir is in between. Like they jumped off the top of the castle and just ended up, it doesn't make his hands. And Maniza wanted to rule. I didn't like how she sort of became the villain and she's like pure bloods and whatever the fuck. And like I thought Ghassan was the villain. I guess surprise villain is okay, but I wanted Maniza and Nari to have a relationship, so didn't love that. But Maniza wanted the ring to give her power and instead Nari gave it to Ali. I just still don't understand how that correlates to one, magic disappearing and two, them being in Egypt. Now, I guess that Suleiman's ring being removed from Devabad is why magic is gone. At least that's my assumption. But I still don't understand how the fuck they got there. Because that happening is also why Muntadir survives. But again, I need answers because none of it fucking makes sense. And how are they going to get back? So those are my questions for Kingdom of Copper. How the fuck did they get to Egypt? How are they going to get back? How is magic going to be restored? Are we going to find out who Nari's father is? I think that's it. But I am excited to end the trilogy. I just don't know if I'm going to enjoy this third book because I'm just so confused. I don't know what to expect. I don't know what to think. So we'll see how it goes. So let me know if you have read or are planning to read Kingdom of Copper. Otherwise, that's all I have for you today and I'll see you in the next video.